All right, guys, that was Smooth Doc Pim Putter from the Roman Conference and Dating Doctors. Next up, we have a bonus talk from Orlando Owen, who spoke yesterday. <coughs> He's going to do sort of a hypnosis thing. I don't it's, know. To, it's getting rid of issues. I'm, I'm showing you yeah. a technique to get rid of some real, real yeah. fears and, and limiting stuff. Cool. You can always apply to anything and everything. Well, it's going to be awesome, and you guys know him from yesterday, so kick some more ass, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate yep. it. Yep. Okay. You know. Oh. Cool. Thank you, guys. I run a program called Magic Mail, and in this, pro in this program, I do something that is much, much bigger than just looking at each and every individual thing. Like, for instance, there's, there's things about approach anxiety that you can deal with, or there's things about emotional stuff you can deal with, there's ways to game people, there's all this kind of stuff. And a few years back, I, um, I said, okay, there's gotta be a, a different way to tie this all together. There's gotta be like a holistic, I hate that word, but a holistic, sustainable way to, uh, to really get all your issues handled and see them in synergy rather than isolated phenomena. It's kind of like a wheel. I re reinvented the wheel you, so you guys don't have to. But there's seven components to it, just to give you like a box cover to this whole thing. And it's all very much interconnected. If you work on one, you'll get all of them will, will raise. It's kind of like the hundredth monkey effect. So if you, if you look at the individual things, it's going to be very difficult for you to really see, okay, this guy says this, okay, this guy says that, okay, this seems to be a contradiction. There's the caveman style that I very much like of bad boy, but yet there's a whole different thing about being authentic and, and actually being truthful to who you are. And the one component of this magic male process, there's seven, there's like remasculation, daring to be a man, there's like what I call ultra deep game, which is a very deep bodily, almost bioenergetic way to get rid of issues once and for all, which is not mental or cerebral. There's radical presence, there's the thing I talked about, this is like a charisma kind of training. There's how can you even be present, Pre exude presence, you have to be present with your own emotional issues. There's magnetic attraction, which is the law of attraction of attraction that we talked yesterday. This is how, how can you even let these, these things in? You can't only let into your life what you're already vibrating on. There's what I call play and not game, which is a totally different way of approaching. Game, to me, is like something very manipulative, whereas play, being playful, I mean, fears are contextual. The fear of approaching it becomes a dare like bungee jumping to me. If I have to do a cold approach, I freeze up. Instead, I get into a different context and I just go and I talk to the girl and there's nothing to it. I have zero approach anxiety when I'm just talking to a girl. When I'm opening up a set, it's fearful and, you know, by the sweat of thy brow, shalt thy open women. A bunch of bullshit. There's sexual mastery, there is authentic power. All this ties in together. You can't really do one without affecting all the other five, uh, six pieces. It's seven pieces. The one I'm going to go into right now is called Ultra Deep Game, and it's a way of really getting rid of fears. Now, in the Bible, I'm not a Christian by any stretch, but uh, Jesus said something that said, choose you, a man can only serve two masters, fear or love, doubt or faith. Choose you, therefore, this day, which master you shall serve. Now, there's only really two basic emotions. There's only like trust and love, and that's where all the stuff, you become yourself, you become authentic, you become very powerful. And women will feel that. Even if you're admitting, like Pim was saying, for instance, yeah, I have an approach anxiety, or I'm a little shy, or I'm a little nervous, that's fine, but that takes a lot of courage. The other side of the equation is all your fears, and that's all the stuff that's holding you back, that's holding you down. There's only two fears that are natural, quote unquote, that babies have. The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. All others are by definition conditioned. Like approach anxiety is conditioned. Public speaking, that fear is conditioned. You learn this stuff in kindergarten, you learn it in, in high school. Some people don't have it. Those are the naturals. All others have it. And it's those fears that will stop you from anything. They'll stop you from approaching a girl. They'll stop you from being authentic. They'll stop you from feeling deserving of certain things. And you can only attract into your life what you feel deserving of. The one thing you need to really get rid of is your fears and your pains. 
and that's sort of like something you've built up over years and years and decades. What I do is kind of like peeling away the layers of an onion. It's like top shit on top of shit on top of shit and so forth. In your colon, if you have emotional problems, I mean, if you have, if you have toxic food, your colon will start developing sort of like a bin liner, kind of like, a, like, you know, the trash stuff you put in there so it doesn't get dirty. It's kind of like a protective layer to keep you from toxins. It's called mucoidal plaque, and it's a very negative substance. Yes, it does shield your, your intestines from, from absorbing toxins. Of course, it also shields you, and that's the bad news, from absorbing nutrients, meaning those fears are the same way. They keep you from actually approaching life. You're hiding behind this fortress. It's kind of like that song by Sting, Fortress Around Your Heart, or what Madonna is singing, the, um, what is it called, the, uh, you're frozen when your heart's not open. That's fear. That's what keeps you, you have to look good so you can't take chances of approaching a girl. And, and let's say you're being shut down, you're having emotional stuff that you're going to be afraid of. You're not afraid of the girl, you're afraid of what you're going to do to yourself afterward. Those things are all hardwired to your, they're automatic responses. They've become so, they're not like hardwired in the sense that they were always there, but they're conditioned through what uh, neuro neurologists call neuroplasticity. It's a, it's a lengthy conditioning process which you can undo. And what I call, what we're going to do here is what um, I would call emotional high colonics. You know what a high colonics are, right? It's like when they stick a tube up your butt and they wash out all the mucoidal plaque and the shit. Well, well, what? No, what? No, they stick a tube up. It's, it's called, it's like, you know, colonics. It's, uh, it's, it's cleaning out your colon. And they stick a tube up your butt and they put in hot and cold water and this flush out the shit because all that mucoidal plaque that supposedly shields you from toxins shields you from nutrients it shields you from i mean it has all kinds of bacteria grow in there and, and you know nasty shit it's it's a fertile ground for all the negative stuff just like your sub unconscious mind not your subconscious but your unconscious mind will harbor crap it's like viruses on your hard drive they'll start replicating to the point of until your hard drive is completely full and that's what happens to most guys. Your hard drive is full. And then you can't really go out there and learn new stuff. You can't really take chances. You're, you're trying to play it safe. And this is all fear. I'm going to show you a way to get rid of those fears real, real quick. I learned this, this method that I'm going to show you from Steve P. And uh, Steve Pickers, you know who he is, right? Steve P and, and what Neil calls Rasputin, Eric, uh, Hypnotica. But those, those guys taught me some very important stuff. And I took this method about 10 years ago, and I started developing a little bit further into a context of where I raise fears, which Steve usually doesn't do. He waits till a fear comes up. I actually raise the fear to a point to, or the pain, to where it becomes like ever so uncomfortable. The more uncomfortable it becomes, the better it is because it's like a gopher that you're trying to smoke out, you know, these little moles that are like eating up your garden. It's like smoking them out. And these things will come up. When they come up, it's, it's like Caddyshack, that stupid movie from like way back, where they're trying to smoke out these stupid gophers out of a, a golf course. And it's like, grab the motherfucker. And they're like, okay, now I got you by the balls. You're going to die, motherfucker. That's it. That's what we're going to do to your fears. So we're going to do to your little issues because that's, it's almost like, ever heard the expression somebody's pushing your buttons? It's like, oh yeah, she was pushing my buttons. Well, how can she? How can she push my buttons? So do I have like a panel here of like, like button number like 3B, whatever, 5, delta, whatever? And she pushes it and then I'm like a slave to my own emotions. It's like an emotional charge fires off somewhere and I'm a slave to it. I don't like to be that. William Reich was a psychologist. He was a student of Freud who really rejected Freud's very analytical um, approach of psychoanalysis, which doesn't work. You can go to a psychiatrist for 30 years. I mean, I'm going to probably like, piss off some psychiatrists here. But the point is, from my own psychology background, I can tell you that shit does not work. You know why you're fucked up, but it's cerebral. William Reich was into bioenergetics. He said the issues get trapped in the tissues, meaning it's literally assuming that mind, body, and spirit are like one. They are. They're connected, very much connected. And you can't isolate an emotional problem. You can't solve it 
with your mind. It's just not on the same level. It's like, it doesn't compute. So in order to really raise an issue, in order to get rid of a fear, you have to basically confront it, bring it up, and then when you have it, you feel it in your body, you realize, hey, it's all connected. I can maybe even see colors, I can see images come up with this. And when you have it all connected, that's when you literally pull it out of your, out of your cells. Now, science, bio, um, biology, biochemistry actually found out a few years ago that fears, emotional trauma, anything like that is literally written into cellular memory, very much like a hard drive. It's like, writes it down into cellular memory, billions and trillions of cells. It's anchored through proteins. And the only way to get rid of it is to either go into shock or like, you know, pattern interrupts, very, very drastic methods that I don't like, or sort of like a little bit of a trance level. Where you really address the issue, you really confront it, you let it come up naturally. Now I'm gonna raise issues here for you, and just a few. Don't do this by yourself. We do this in the workshops in a very controlled environment. Now most psychologists would call this ab reactions and they're deathly afraid because most psychiatrists and psychologists have about 40 hours of hypnosis training. I have about 6,000. But I'm not gonna do hypnosis with you because it's really not necessary. At this point, what I do is I do a little bit of trance talk and the model that Erickson used, or the model that a lot of people support, Walter Secord is the school I come from, use is sort of like my Superconscious, my higher self, basically connects with you. If you've ever heard that, Milton Erickson said one very interesting thing that nobody really understood. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. I cannot hypnotize you. I cannot get you in. Even staged, you may say, oh, these guys in Vegas, I've seen them fail miserably when they try to do X-rated, like stuff that worked on 20-year-old kids in, in Vegas. They try to do it to 60-year-old guys in a casino in, in Sedona, Arizona, or near it. Didn't work. He had him in state, but the suggestions would not go through because their higher self, their, higher, their subconscious, their superconscious would not allow him to go into these ridiculous states because it was abusive. Those 20-year-old kids in Vegas consented to make an asses of themselves. Those 60-year-old people did not. And it didn't go through, and the guy was an expert at that stage of hypnosis. He could not fucking do it. All right. So the model that shamans use in hypnosis is basically my super con I know this sounds a little woo-woo, but really, like, when you're going into trance, you're doing it to yourselves. I'm merely sort of like giving you, open the door for you. You're a super conscious. If you're super conscious, your higher self, your, your God part, spark a creator, says I'm full of shit, it will stop, it'll stop you from, from following my suggestions. And I'm not, this is why I stopped doing hypnosis altogether. I don't do individual trans sessions. I do not do formal inductions. I don't do trans induction, trans maintenance, element, nothing. I just talk to you. Whether you go in or not is solely up to you. And the way I raise an issue is, and again, don't do this at home. Psychiatrists usually do not know how to handle this. But in the workshops, we do raise an issue. I'm going to raise it just a wee bit here. Just some stuff that you may resonate to. When you feel that stuff, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to have to sort of like do like a very fast thing here. When you're thinking about or feeling rather certain fears, certain things, let's say you've been shut down by a girl. She gave you a real hardcore thing. She said, oh, fuck off, you little piece of shit or whatever. You know, like that is extremely rare. This only happens once in, in maybe a thousand approaches, but it does happen. And when something like that happens, that's when you can... For instance, get into that, track this in your body, really feel it. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. And then release it once and for all. And we're going to test it afterwards if you can bring the emotion back or not. My intuition is you probably can't, not at least as harsh as it was there. You're not afraid of the girl. Or whenever you, you, you have these fears, you'd feel not unworthy or you're having frustration or you, f you think you need to tolerate second class behavior from people or whatever it is. It's those fears, those unworthy, feelings of unworthiness, all that stuff that keeps you down. And it doesn't need to be that way. Now, this is not going to happen from one day to the next. The first about 10 times that Steve P. did this exercise with me, about a decade ago, um, I didn't believe that it would work. I thought it was like some feel-good suggestions. I actually yelled at him. And if you've ever yelled at Steve P. and he yells back at you, that's a bad thing because he's this badass dude. and kind of scary, you know, he intimidated Neil Strauss. He said, you guys are kind of intimidating. But 
very compassionate guy who knows a lot. And he showed me this exercise, as I said, about 10 years ago. And again, he said, whenever I came up with some bullshit thing that I thought was upsetting me, he said, that's not what's upsetting me. There's something entirely different behind it. And he said, stop. Take a tour of your body. Just go through your body and look where you feel that. Feel inside your body. Where, track this issue in your body. Where do you feel it? I'm just giving you a quick rundown on how it works. So whenever something is upsetting you, like say you feel it here, we have these things like, oh my God, you know, like it's a pain in the ass or a pain in the neck or it's a, I see red or, you know, there's all these metaphors. It's kind of like choking me up, whatever it is. These, these things actually have a very real, um, making me sick to my stomach. These things have a very real metaphorical quality because they really are trapped in your tissues, in your body. And it's only at that level that you can actually release it. So whenever you feel an issue, whenever something comes up, it's the best course of action is to kind of like close your eyes a little, not now, but like close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and then take a tour of your body. To see where this thing raises its, or raises its ugly head. A lot of times there'll be like solar plexus, which is like the chakras, for instance. Those are favorite places for them to show up. The favorite one is either here, the solar plexus, which always has to do with ego control, uh, here in the stomach or throat, I'm uh, sorry, in the um, throat or neck, larynx. That's all communication kind of issues. When, you, when you're trying to say somebody can't, there's stuff that you're not speaking your truth, that's when they will kind of like show up here. There's other things, for instance, I did this exercise probably for about five years before I ever even felt anything in my heart. It was a little tantric girl little Dakini that opened this up for me about five years ago in Sedona, Arizona, and, and then all of a sudden I had to deal with that. I've done this exercise about close to 700 times in a decade. It's very powerful, and it's a little bit of a trance level, but it's really important that whenever an issue comes up or a fear comes up, especially when I raise it for you, that you make, you know, that you take a tour of your body, track it in your body and see where it is. Neck, neck and shoulder, Shoulders are really popular spots. Could be in your kidneys, could be in your intestines, could be even in your hips or your, your balls, wherever. And then see how it's all connected. It could be like fog, it could be like chewing gum, it could be like, little, like a blob. It could be connected with rods, uh, with you know, ropes, thorny vines, even with, uh, like I've seen like chains, I've even seen like one time I actually saw myself in an Iron, Iron Maiden, like if you know what that is. It's not just a rock band, it's actually a, a thing in the, in the Middle Ages that they had a cage with spikes where you were just kind of like tortured to death. I've seen images like that come up. Don't raise those on your own. They'll, whatever comes up naturally is fine, but don't actually push it. We do this in the workshop because we know how to get you out of an ab reaction if one should ever occur. I've only seen it three times in about a thousand guys. It's very rare but you got to know what you're doing. Psychiatrists usually do not. And um, whenever I'm going to raise this issue, just look at how it comes up. When you really then have it and you feel how it's all connected, you bring it up slowly, take a couple of breaths and loosen it out of all your cells. Like imagine your body being like cellular memory and like, like, a, like a bubble memory or like a hard drive, like RAM and you're just taking it out of all these cells, feel it like, get it into motion. Emotion is energy in motion. Get it going, take a few deep breaths and see how it's like pulling all up here and then raise it, bring it up to a point either between your eyes and eyelids or in your third eye. And uh, like some place here, then when you close your eyes and you see that thing, give the whole thing a color, one color and one label. A lot of times, like a label or like a, a name for it, the, the fears that we name, we can release. But when you, when you see the name come up, you may think, oh, this can't be. Like I was upset about, um, like for instance, a guy that I was working with a few years ago, a, a coach. And he was just not doing his stuff. He wasn't there when I needed the guy. And um, I, I had to really, instead of getting all upset about it, because I couldn't sleep for a night, and then I said, look, let me do this complementary opposite exercise here. Raise the issue, and the word that popped into my head was betrayal. And I said, no, that ain't betrayal. He's, he's just not doing his job. It's all kinds of issues, but it's not betrayal. My mind was trying to say, no, that's the wrong word. 
But then later it turned out that it was actually a form of betrayal. It wasn't really like bad, but it was like he said he would do something and he didn't. He was going to be there, he's going to be committed, and he wasn't. So in a way it was a form of betrayal. So whatever the first word is that pops into your head that you're going to label this thing with is usually, in retrospect, hindsight, the correct one. So what about the color? The color, you know, you'll see probably different colors. A lot of times I'll see red here, I may see black here, I may see like nasty shit, like slimy, grimy, black, or blood, whatever. But just give it one color up there, give it, it's important that you reduce it, that you simplify it to one color and one label. And when you have it up here, at that point you should close your eyes or have them closed, probably before. What we do then is we shoot it into a, a glass or a crystal ball. It's, um, in Germany they call it the ball exercise now, for some reason, because uh, it's kind of like that. And what we do is you, you take your hands like you, you're taking water from like a, a basin or a lake to drink. You know when you do that? You raise that up above eye level. That's important because it shuts off the internal dialogue. You may have seen Steve P. do this on uh, David D'Angelo's body language. He's done a very light version of this thing. We're going to do a much more hardcore one here. And as I said, I've taken the basic exercise of Steve P. and I've made it a lot more deep and a lot more powerful that way. It's his exercise, but not in the way that I do it. And um, at that point, you figure out your hands are above eye level like so. And then imagine like the size of a, let's say a basketball or a soccer ball or something like that, whatever size fits you, like a big glass or crystal ball. When you see the issue here, I know this sounds more complicated than it really is. I'm going to walk you through it once here, and then I'm going to actually do it with you. So just so you know what to do when, when we actually do the exercise. At that point, you bring it up here to a point between your eyes and eyelids, and then you shoot it into the ball. It's like, and then see it, see again the color and the label in the ball. In your mind's eye then, when you have it, you feel, already, you feel immediate release when you have it in that ball. At that point, turn it, and you, you don't need to use, I see guys doing all this kind of crazy shit. As a matter of fact, I don't even use my hands anymore. It's just a tool for visualization at this point. But for you, the first few times, you should probably use your hands because it's easier that way. And then turn in your mind's eye the ball away so it's on the far side of your issue. Then take another tour of your body when you already feel that relief. You're already feeling like a lot, that stuff is literally outside your body now. It's, you may think it's just visualization, it's a lot more than that. The more you do it, by the way, the more it will actually really take shit literally out of your tissues, literally out of your body memory. You may think it's a bunch of shit, but trust me on this. And um, I've seen results with this you would not believe. But you take it up, and then you take another tour of your body, and feeling that relief, feeling the opposite emotion. That's why it's called a complementary opposite exercise. You're feeling an other emotion, like what would it feel like to really feel confident or loving or powerful or whatever a positive emotion would be for you. That's the opposite of that emotion. Track that in your body also, briefly. Just a few breaths. Go like one, two, three. <coughs> what does that feel like? Bring that up also. Give that a color, give that a label and then shoot that into the other side of the, ex of, of the ball. Then turn it, so, and, and here's where I differ from Steve. He likes to use a dominant hand. I, I use it on the left hand. I want to have the positive emotion on the left hand. There's a reason for it I'm not going to go into, but it's an important one. And take the negative issue in your right hand. Have them side by side in this ball, and then crack the ball inside in two hemispheres. Take the negative shit, and let it kind of congeal into a sheet of ice. Freeze dry, you know, freeze dry it, like Nescafe. Freeze dry it above eye level into a sheet of ice. And it's going to be outside your body and it's going to be in a different color. It's completely at your mercy at that point. With the other hand, ignite that positive color into a, like a flame, like a torch, like a flamethrower, and then attack that and melt it away like so. Imagine the sheet of ice up here and then just melt it away and see it burn up. Sometimes some shit is really sticky. You know, you may have to crank up the temperature to like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of degrees, even million, like a plasma gun, like hotter than the sun, which is like, what now, 30 million degrees or something like that, Fahrenheit? 
and just completely burn it away until you see it sort of like dissolve. And eventually it's all gone. And when it's all gone, then you just take that sun that you have and you ignite that color in your hand until it becomes almost like as bright as the sun, like the first sun on the, on the day of spring. And when it can't be any more warm, any more colorful, and any more bright, then with the next breath, inhale it into your body and let this energy sort of like dissipate, or let it, let it just kind of fill up your body and overwrite the old emotion, the old stuff in your body until it's completely gone. It's like, you know, like when, you, when, you, when you're formatting your hard drive, you're going like zeros and ones, like low level erase. That's sort of like what you're doing with this stuff. You're completely overwriting, overwriting the old information and it's gone. And then with the next breath, kind of like take, a, you know, pull it back up out of yourself. If there's any residue of it, pull it back up, focus on your, on your head and shoot it out, be gone. With the next breath, take more of that positive energy that you're going to replace it with and anchor it in your body. Do this three or four times and then see if you can bring the emotion back. I know this is probably a little theoretical. I don't know if you can remember all the steps, but that's why I'm going to walk you through it once again when we're actually going to do the exercise. And before we do that, I'd like for you guys to just to kind of like take a couple of deep breaths, excuse me, and just kind of like relax. Don't cross, this is always important because it blocks chi. Don't cross your arms, don't cross your legs for free energy flow. For those of you who do martial arts, you know what that is. Ki, chi, prana, kundalini, whatever you want to call it. It's different energies, but it's all similar. And that needs to flow freely. And that's actually what clean, cleanses the stuff out. Taking a few deep breaths and just really relaxing for, for a few moments here. And just really, just kind of like chill. Just take a tour of your body already and see if there's anything that might bother you or anything that might be an issue for you. If you have one that you want to get rid of, ask yourself, is it, is it okay to get rid of it? If you don't find one, or let me just give you a few examples of what could be issues. Maybe you've been out in the street and you've approached a girl in the last few days or weeks, even like this weekend here in Stockholm, and she didn't respond favorably or she shut you down. Just feel that. You know, whenever you feel that, really, really just get into that. To the degree that you actually allow this to show up in your body or that you allow yourself to feel the emotion is the exact degree that you can get rid of later. If you're sort of like saying, well, I don't want to really go there, well, great, then you can release, you know, very little of it. If you're saying, look, I'm going to confront this, it's only a couple of minutes, it's better to do this now than to always, always have this issue. Like, for instance, maybe, maybe you feel like it's not really okay to be a man, or maybe you have issues with, like, drama queens, maybe some girl or girlfriend has constantly created drama, or she's not giving you the love or affection or the sex that you want. A big issue for me was, and it's for a lot of guys, like, you know, when you see girls, even ugly girls, they seem to just have sexual choice. They need to just snap their fingers and 10 guys will kind of like chase their tail. And you feel like, look, I'm, I'm not even a bad looking guy, but you know, I, I don't have that freedom. I've spent a lot of lonely nights. How does that make you feel? Just kind of like take a little tour of your body and see if that kind of resonates with you if that's something you would like to get rid of. Lots of other stuff, you know. Maybe you have lots of friend girls, but no girlfriend. Maybe you always fall into the friend zone. What does that make you feel? What, what kind of emotions does that bring up for you, presupposing that it does? Or maybe um, sometimes you feel like, oh my God, you know, if I, I can't really, it's not really okay to be a man. Or maybe you're even upset about, uh, about the stuff that you're um, kind of like that, that society has sort of like emasculated men so much. Just feel that. Just take a tour of your body and just feel that. Maybe you have other issues for you. you know? Maybe you've been left. Maybe you've been dumped. Maybe some girl was just kind of like rude to you. Or maybe you felt like you've given your power away and you've really kind of like beaten yourself up for that. Maybe you're just really upset about something. You know, just feel that. Just allow that to show up in your body. Really feel the emotion. Take a tour of your body and feel where that comes up for you. 
maybe you feel like it's not okay to be a man. Or maybe you're thinking when you're approaching a girl, oh my God, if she knew what I was really thinking. Or maybe you feel like, oh, I'm not really worthy. I don't really deserve these girls. I'd love to have these hot girls, but I'm just not that kind of guy. Maybe you're feeling upset about that. Or maybe you just have been what the pickup guys call excusing. Maybe you wanted to do 100 approaches, but have really done zero. And now you're beating yourself up for it, and you're feeling, oh my god, I'm such a loser, I can't do that. Whatever it is for you. Maybe it's just a dull pain that you can't qualify or identify. Just allow yourself to feel that emotion pretty deeply, just for a few minutes for a few moments and really take a tour of your body, track it wherever it shows up. Maybe it shows up in your solar plexus, maybe it shows up in your throat, maybe it shows up in your heart, maybe it's other spots. Wherever it is that it shows up for you, just really become congruent with that, let it, uh, let it pop up, kind of really feel, if, presupposing you can see colors. If you, can't, if you think you can't see colors, just pretend, visualize, imagine that you can see colors. Maybe other images come up, maybe disturbing images, whatever it is, let it come up. Take a few deep breaths and let it circulate throughout your body and look at all the spots in your body where it shows up. See the colors, see how it's all connected. Maybe it's ropes, maybe it's vines, maybe it's chains, maybe it's rods, maybe it's just one amorphous blob, whatever it is for you, just let it come up. And when you really feel that, then bring up the energy, get it into motion with two or three breaths, really see it kind of loosening in every cell until it slowly floats up through all the cells of your body, up to a point between your eyes and eyelids or your third eye, wherever it is. Raise it up to that spot and then give it a color, give it a label. Then take your hands like I showed you, like you're taking up water and raise them above eye level. It's really important that you do it above eye level because it shuts down the internal dialogue. And then see the ball there. And with the next breath, take, take, pull it up from every cell of your body and shoot it into that ball. Until it's right in there. Do this maybe two or three times until you feel it out of every cell of your body. One more time. Shoot it all into that ball. And when it's firmly in that ball, see the color and the label again. And then in your mind's eye, you don't need to use your hands for that, but in your mind's eye, turn it away so that it's facing the other way, that ball. I mean, on the other side of the ball. Okay, now take one more tour of your body. Feel the relief of this thing already being outside your body. And then really get into the opposite emotion of that. Just really feel that. What would it feel like? Or what does it feel like to really have this issue handled? And, and how much more power can you already get into your body, in your mind, in your, in your heart because of this? Give this also a color. Give this also a label. Bring this also up to a point between your eyes and the eyelids. Color label. And shoot this into the other side of the ball. <laughs> okay. Now turn the ball in your mind's eye so that the negative thing is on top of your right hand and the other thing on top of your left hand, the positive emotion. Okay, you see them side by side. Above your right hand is the color of that issue that was bothering you before and no longer is. And on the left side, you see the positive emotion, the color to that. Let the ball split from top to bottom, like into right and left hemisphere. The stuff that you have in your right hand, let it congeal into a sheet of ice above eye level. It's frozen, it's freeze dried, it can't do anything. If you need to cough, by the way, or something like that, that could, could be definitely be related to getting rid of some shit. You'll find this a lot of times. When you do this by yourself, you may even cry or something. It's up there, it's frozen. Okay, now you can drop your right hand. And with your left hand, see that color, the positive color, and let that ignite into a little, like a flamethrower, a little sun, like And attack that sheet of ice, mercilessly, burn it away make it hotter, make it brighter, make it brighter than a thousand suns and just burn this away. 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, a hundred thousand. See this thing burn up, see it melt away, see it evaporate, see it completely go from ice directly to vapor.
bypassing the water state and completely seed evaporate, seed gone. It's like if you're taking like a, like a welding torch and you're attacking like ice with it and seed completely melt until it completely evaporates. It's so hot that nothing can withstand this heat. Make it hotter, make it brighter until there's nothing. This thing doesn't stand a chance. Do this a few passes until you see, okay, it's, it's burning away, it's melting away, okay, it's evaporating. If there's a little bit of residue, what I like to do is imagine that there's a little vacuum cleaner coming out of the sky and it's going like so and it's sucking it up and it's gone. Okay, now it's gone, that thing is no longer there. Okay, now with that, that flame that you have in your left hand, you can sort of like lower that now and just make that ball, make that brighter, let it ignite critical mass until it's like a sun. Your personal, your own personal sun. And make that even brighter, brighter, more colorful in that beautiful color of strength and power that you saw before, of inner peace. Make it so bright, like 10,000 suns. And then just really, with the next breath, make this brighter, bigger, warmer until it doesn't get any more warm. And then with the next breath, inhale this through your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and let it like liquid gold kind of float down into your legs, into your arms, into your fingertips, into your toes, into your hairs, into your eyes, everywhere. See it fill up your body and override all this old cellular memory. Just completely let it override it. Then with the next breath, if there's any of that negative stuff left, any residue, pull it up from every cell of your body, pull it up, focus on your head, and shoot it out. Be gone. With the next breath, take a little more of that sunlight in, let it dissipate into every cell, let it completely override all the old information, like liquid gold, filling up all your cells. Feel that beautiful warmth of just great emotion, kind of like running through every cell of your body, overriding all the old information. And if there's any, any negative stuff left, pull it up from every cell of your body, bring it up to your head, shoot it out and say, this is not my energy. Say this to yourself, this is not my energy. I reject it and I deflect it, sending it back to where it came from, creating harm to no one, sending it through the light with loving, healing energy and unconditional love and whoosh, be gone. And then when you just listen to this, you can integrate this beautiful feeling that you had before, that you now have in your, every cell of your body, the sense of relief, and just integrate that and just really feel how much more powerful you're already feeling now. Just a few seconds into the future, maybe a few minutes into the future, how much better your life's already becoming. As you're looking back at this moment right now here where you're making these powerful changes, integrating them into every cell of your body, and really feeling how this energy is completely filling you up. And this is just the seeds of something that's expanding in your body, in your mind, in your heart of positive energy, knowing that you're really worthy, that you carry in yourself all that, like the seed of a tree, like the, the eight corn, the seed of a mighty oak tree, has all the information of that mighty oak tree in you. This is just the beginning of a process, and wherever you are in your development is always the right one. You're on the, on the process of growth. And oh, you don't go to a little, you know, small tree that's only maybe a foot tall and say, grow faster. That's not necessary. That tree is always, you're like that tree. You're always at the right stage in the development. You can't force a plant to grow faster. And even if that plant's been a little seedling and somebody put like three inches of asphalt over it, look at the power, the resilience of an acorn, how it can grow right through these layers. If you've seen that on the sidewalk when it cracks open like fresh asphalt, and, it's, and you're like that. Even though maybe there have been like emotional stuff that was like put on you, you have the strength and the power to really crack that open and, and like effortlessly become like that little seedling that's eventually maturing into a bigger and bigger tree, a few feet tall, a few meters tall. Eventually, even you will become this very powerful oak tree, this, this complete and whole man. You're like a perfect example of the perfect man that you always wanted to be. And it's like in that seed, in that acorn, is the entire blueprint of life, the entire blueprint of the universe. It's like a miniature galaxy onto its own. You have all the information. And there is a thing that Wayne Dyer says, it's called, I am whole. Whenever you look in the mirror, just look at yourself, look into your eyes and say to yourself, I am whole and perfect as I was created. I'm not lacking anything. I'm not missing anything. I have everything in me. All it needs to do is have a chance to get a little fertile soil and a little water, a little sunlight, a little air, and it will grow. Sunlight and air will make you grow. And just seek the sun of life.
seek the sun of your life. Find that inner joy, that invisible sun inside of you and let it grow and let it fill you with that sense of self-love, self-worth, and let it really integrate through every cell of your body. And knowing every time, wherever you are, you're always perfect. Every moment is perfect, including your desire to become a more perfect man, including your desire to always develop yourself further and to always grow until you're like a mighty oak. But wherever you are in your development, it's the perfect place for you to be. It's the perfect lessons for you to live. And never beat yourself up for stupid stuff that isn't ready yet. You will get there in time. Let it just unfold. It's like the river of well-being. It's like the stream. Nothing you want is upstream. Just really follow that stream downstream. Don't point your boat upward and try to row upstream. That's ridiculous. Everything you want will come to you naturally if you really use that law of attraction. Just float down that stream of life, that stream of well-being. Connect yourself by knowing that you are deserving of these things because you are whole and perfect as your creator put you here. Your creator wanted you here. You're here for a reason. And you're here because you wanted to be. Your soul wanted to be here, to reincarnated into this planet, into this body, to fill that role in life, that only you can fill that role. And as you look in maybe just a few hours, maybe a day or two into the future, floating back out in the future, looking at how much better your life's already because of this moment in time where you go into this moment in time right now, making those powerful changes, integrating them into every cell of your body, and really knowing not just thinking or looking, but knowing that you are that powerful man that you always wanted to be. And yes, there's <coughs> development. You never stop growing, otherwise you would be dead anyway. All your life, all your lifetimes will you grow. It's a constant process and it's perfect. Wherever you are right now is the perfect chance. It's not about where you all want to be. It's about the journey of getting there and enjoying all these moments of where you learn, where you grow, integrating all that into your body, floating out maybe 10, maybe 20 years into your life, maybe look back how much better your life is as you look back from the end of your life, right now to this moment in time where you're making those powerful changes now and into the future, deeply integrating it to every cell of your body, really knowing that this is your future, that this is your truth, and that you are whole and perfect as you were created. And when you really feel that even deeper, when you really feel that on every cell, in every cell of your body, deeply integrated, permanent, then just slowly come back into the room, just really just take that with you and realize you always, you're never farther away than three breaths. Whenever during the day or you have any kind of weird moments or doubt or anything, even 10 years from now, sit down, take three deep breaths, go into that, that state of relaxation. You always have access to that state that you're feeling right now, that positive state. You can always access it at any point in time or space. You have access to this inner peace and strength. And this is just the very, very beginning of a much deeper and longer journey for you. But realize when you, when, that you always come back to this moment in time right here where you're making those changes in the here and now. And when you feel that, and when you have it, you can slowly come back into the right, in the presence, going from nowhere to find these things into now here, these words will always be with you. It's a very smooth, integrative process for you to slowly integrate these things deeply and then slowly coming up right now, right here, into the here and now. Feel your body, feel this integrating in your body and slowly come back into the presence of, giving the present of your presence to all those in the present. You can only be in the present now because if you're not now here, you're nowhere. And you don't want to be nowhere. Go from nowhere to find your inner peace and strength to now here is the time for you to come back slowly into the here and now is the time for you to feel that sense of playfulness, that sense of innocence, <coughs> never resisting these things and just knowing that you are whole and perfect as you were created. Then slowly come back in the room and feel this kind of like this energy float up into this new feeling of strength and power and presence and inner peace. Even if it's just a tiny little bit, it's the first step in a long journey. And you can always go with this journey to the end, always bringing back these emotions. Always here and now is the time for you to come back and float back up into this new state of strength and inner peace. Now come back, welcome back again to your own strength, power, grace, poise, and being the best man you can possibly be. And then slowly come back right here. Right now is the time for you to 
take the first step to a lifelong journey. All right, come back slowly. Come back into the room. And then when you feel that and you know you have always access to this, slowly open your eyes and just really let this, let this kind of envelop you like a cocoon wherever you go. Just even during the day, whenever you see somebody, remind yourself, I am whole and perfect as I was created. And with that, go out in the world and give you the present of your own presence to all the ones present and take that into the world and do your own part of giving this gift to others. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just stay, you don't need to, just stay in that energy and just really feel that. Don't, don't break the pattern, just kind of like feel that and whenever you go out there, maybe don't even chat and talk right away. Just let this kind of like integrate for a couple of minutes, whatever, you know, until you feel like, oh yeah, okay, I can really feel this. All right? No, thank you. And let's just keep this kind of quiet. Thank you. All right. Thank you.